All right. Yeehaw. Clubhouse game. It's going to be secret starting on the defense, like I said. G2 on the What? Attack. <laughs> Whoa. God damn it. Whoa. Whoa. I... Thank you, Fabian. As usual, you end up not making any situation. What? Wait, what? Can we turn off chat for a second? Boys, y'all good? <laughs> Can we bring the camera back? Monty and Maverick removed here. Nothing too surprising now, is it? No. Except for the chat, but that's chat. Yeah, that was a... Uh, oh, hello. Awakening. And G2 taking out a Mav and a Smoke. Oh, come on. Uh, Fabian with, again, another garbage joke. Hey, at least it references a very popular show that's coming back soon. <laughs> okay, what is it? Wait, no spoilers. Wow. <laughs> what? Look, Fabian, like, Fabian Helston, your jokes suck. <laughs> Let's go with that. Yes. They suck outright. I think you can reference as many popular shows as you want. And they would still suck. <laughs> well, that's a... It's a good uh, thing he can't hear us here. Yeah, very and, good thing. And, and on top of that, we can actually fire back because last week he kind of roasted me. He did in that interview. He did. Um, he wrote did you dirty. <laughs> he he did me dirty. Yes, as you say, in not a good way. So CCTV Cash is the site we're going to go to here. Valkyrie being played by Funkers on the sixth pick away from the castle, and the Nomad is actually in play. So Fame is going to move away to the Thatcher. A bit surprising, given the fact that everybody's kind of been harping on about uh, Nomad in. Very correct fashion. She does have a. Is that a Valkyrie with a deployable? Funkers, have you ever played Valk? What are you doing? They already have a deployable on. That's gotta be a mistake. Nah, man. I mean, he set that thing up quick. Maybe it's just. I don't know. Maybe it's just a reaction. Is there another shield? I was gonna say. Does Leon, does Leon have a shield? They could. Couldn't they all technically? No, Mute can't take a deployable anymore. But Legion could, Echo did, Bandit could. Oh no, Bandit's Barbar and Nitro. Never mind. You could have three. You could have three deployables if you really wanted it. Why? I, I don't know. They, did the patch go live and we didn't know? Oh, I love this position. This is from Baka Brian. The reason why you see Leon setting up that first yokai in the position that he did, it's basically glued onto the light. And Marcio, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, like switch around, go up, you see the light at the top, the light fixture at the top. Yeah, there you go. It's there. That yokai actually does not like break away the light and it just hovers there as you can see. Oh, it man. has no effect whatsoever on the environment. I love this position. I knew this like a while ago. And I'm like, this position. I wonder why not many people use this. It's great. It's a good start there. And Speaking of a good start, G2 making an immediate entry in towards Stock as Kanto makes his way downstairs and he's firing back onto these pings inside of Garage that's flying through the base of the Garage stairs and he's going to drop all the way down into Oil Pit as the Thermite Charge will detonate on his backside. One of those Garage panels being blown open, shotgun holes being made, and Leon will collect the first kill onto Goga who's playing Ash. So we're really delving what? into some fascinating territory here, but Goga's... I guess inception into the Ash roll for G2 does not fare too well. And now shots raining down from above Kanta will not connect until just now, down to about 90 HP, but the ingress into Garage quite successful here for G2. Kanta trying to do some work from below, but it's Fonkers that'll find the hit on Jonas, taking him off. And they only have one more hard breach here with an exothermic charge, but it's not like much can be done when you're dead. Meepy wipes Pengu off the face of the map and Fabian again, take it away. Meepy wins these. And Kanta Ricketti is last man alive. Where were you last weekend? Well, how is this happening now? Everybody just looking down on the Kanto as not a single point of damage has been done to Team Secret and Stizzy to clean it off. This is a real perfect round. No damage, no nothing. Just G2, what are you doing? And Secret just... That was Team Secret getting um, aggressive, to say the least. Taking every gunfight imaginable under the sun. 
Um, G2's focus there, I feel like it got a little sidetracked, right? Like you, you went through your first progression, which was pretty standard, honestly. You push in through stock, you get your buck in there to cause some havoc inside of cash. You thermite open the back wall into garage to cause some pressure and hold down the angle towards the rotate window towards the balcony. But then G2 skipped a step, which is go get the main wall. Go get balcony mm -hmm. wall to clear out again, have a, a crossfire onto that rafters position. Meepy had no pressure anywhere. He's allowed to stay upstairs, uh, upstairs in the rafters and fight for as long as he wanted. Fonkers with pressure below. G2 just fell into a trap inside of Garage. It looked like they just got ahead of themselves on that round. And Secret, like you said, a flawless round. Not a single point of damage taken to Team Secret in round number one. But they'll head downstairs now in a rotation. That is pretty common. We never really see Bar being defended on Clubhouse anymore, which is tragic because I do... I do have a lot of uh, nostalgia for the bar site, even I think with how trash it was. I think you just have a nostalgia for the bar. <laughs> Maybe. What you trying to say, bud? Yeah, we said hello to Blue. We did. It was a lot of fun. We kept him, we kept him busy till 3.30 a.m. when he needed to catch his flight. I don't yeah. remember getting home. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't. I don't know how I, I got home. Don't worry, I got the cab back. That's good to know, because yes. I just woke up in my bed the next day. I was like, oh, okay, I'm home. We made it. I, I had a nice glass of milk when we were out of the morning. Yes. That's it. Fabian will get the first one on a limb, sticking away the back. Where? Why is the maestro there? Late reinforcement on the hatch is the only thing I could possibly think of, unless the limbs really wanted to continue the aggression from last round. Hmm. All right. Cantor Ketty moving up here. And for, for people that are watching this and are like, why is there this switch in the roles? And the big thing is... Jonas hasn't had the best six months. No. From looking at this, you have to have him on the Habana in this situation because you want to switch out the role. That's fine. But then they're like, why did Goga and Pengu switch their usual roles? I mean, usually it's Jonas that plays the Zofia, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of confusing when you look at it, but this is still G2. They still rotate players on different operators and roles fairly uh, regularly, and Leon taking a bit of fire here from the Jacuzzi, but he'll have to drop down back to Billiards, and he's right up behind the Zofia. will get taken away. Goga off the map now, thanks to Funkers, and Leon was looking to close it out. Oh no, this is bad here for Eunice as he's the Hibana pushing in with the Fuser inside his strip hallway, and Kanto! Oh, what a flick by Kanto to drop Leon the flank through the main floor bathroom. You still got Fonkers relaying info on the cardiac sensor. We level at a 3 3, but now you've only got Pengu left for hard breach. You've got the Kaid from Meepy to stall things out. You do have Fabian to counteract those Electro Claws, and now Kanto will start ripping up the floor, and I imagine Meepy might actually want to contest this with that. TCSG 12. Fabian will collect another docket. A lot of the kill column for him. Fonkers will fall. Sir Pulse and a lot of your advanced information about where the push is coming from removed for Team Secret. The Mute will still be able to deny a lot of info gathering for G2, but Pengu will drop straight into Moto and head ready to get up against the church wall. Nothing stopping the church wall being open currently, but Meepy still has Electro Claws. Try and stall that out. Still. Gonna stop now for just a second. Sissy with a C4 out and will not connect. No damage done to Pengu here as he drops to the floor. He walks a dinosaur, but nobody moving in just yet. Meepy holding in down the uh, hallway, but of course with only two players, you're not gonna really have a ton of flexibility. Fabian will find one and Pengu with a swift second onto Stizzy. G2, they pick up the win here. Very effective, but all thanks to the fact that Secret were kind of playing off the site most of the time. Yeah, a lot of a lot of roaming there for a defense downstairs on Clubhouse. Elem's getting caught out as that maestro inside a stock also does not help. No. I, I'm actually not sure if it was inside a stock or the blue stairs room. Yeah, I, we're not sure of which position exactly. Didn't see where exactly he was, but it looks like that's enough to really. That's enough to force Secret to go to gym bedroom already. Really. Because that was just a lot of messing around. In yeah, the that, that was just a lot of sloppiness on, on a roam that I mean, it could have had better effect if uh, Kanto didn't hit that, that nice flick on the main stairs coming down. Mm -hmm. Still. Honestly, I mean... It's like a quick adaptation to a different play style, and Secret might have had that. Yeah, you're like, wow, Fank Falkers did quite a bit of work yeah. in that round. And it just all went away. I mean, he got two extremely impactful kills and dropped the diffuser right there at the entrance. They should have turned into more 
positivity for the team there, but it just was not enough. And you say it is more than enough to force Secret to play Gym Bedroom now. Yeah, that, that also strikes me as a little odd that they're they're going to fall to the, the tertiary bomb site that really is it's probably your least defensible uh, of the main three that are in rotation on Clubhouse. I'm in the, the very vast minority when I say that Bar is actually defensible on this map. Um, for the main three that get played, though, Jim Bedroom. Uh, Jim Bedroom is not your favorite spot to go to. That's kind of your, your escape route, but you're eventually going to have to play it if you play to the norm on Clubhouse, so I guess getting it out of the way early could be the mindset here for Secret. I really I want to harp on what you said, though, about the, the diffuser being dropped at the strip hallway. Surprised that Secret didn't rotate Fonkers and Leon onto that diffuser and play strip yeah. and cover that harder, or play strip and pool table. Um, to try and lock down the diffuser for a longer period of time. I don't know if they spotted the fact that a diffuser was... It might not have been yeah. called out. Mm. That would explain the fact that there wasn't any doubling down on that. Yeah. The, a hugely advantageous position that was offered to Secret, basically. But that's it. G2 are just kind of taking their time here. They know they have the advantage when so it comes to utility. They have the Thermite. They have the Zofia. They have the Havana. They have a lot of redundancy here. They can clear out LMs pretty efficiently. And that's the the shield actually still there. Kanto will find the kill on Leon. And Goga still alive. Kanto is watching the angle still. An easy frag there. And there's a second player up by the bed. That's Tizzy. It's going to open. Uh, what are you? Why? Kanto! Uh, that's the wrong guy! Where did that even... Where was the intention for that frag grenade is my question, because he's still on top of strip roof. Was he trying to bank that off the gym windowsill and in? If, if it was uh, by the gym windowsill, there's no way it could have killed the Zofia. Number two, if it was by the bed, that window wasn't open yet. It got open the instant he killed his teammate. No way. For people that are looking at this, by the way, and seeing, oh, why are there holes that have been opened up? Well, theoretically, People say that you can you can hear when uh, Thermite or anybody is putting up their utility on the side of the wall to try to blow it open. So it gives you kind of a bigger heads up if you're bandit tricking, which is the case. But we're not really sure the math checks out. Funker's watching through. He'll find one player moving down, and that's Fabian actually on the roam clear with a Thatcher. A pretty odd thing to say, but he would play the Dokubi usually to try to move through this. Yuna's going in for the Diffuser plant, but it's only going to be a bit of a fake here. Sissy peeking around. There's nobody watching. Yuna as he goes in for the Diffuser plant. Kanto Rikete will find one kill. Sissy with a refrag onto Pengu. And that one in the back. Kanto will find one more. Can he save the round? There's two more left. Lems and Fonker's in. Diffuser picked up. Goes in for the reload. And the Pulse downstairs is going to find and get all the info needed. He's going to try to pre-spray or go for the Nitro Cell. But that's the drop and the headshot. Funkers take away Kanta Ricchetti. And the round botched in so many ways by G2. will go the way of Secret. That team kill certainly didn't help, but things happen. Um... Also, yeah, the uh, the positioning there for G2, it seems like, again, they got a little ahead of themselves. They saw an entry, and they just wanted to take advantage of it as fast as possible without fully understanding the scope of what was happening around them. What was happening inside gym was not the same as what was happening inside of Master and then the gym hallway and even the bathroom. It looked like G2 just saw an opening inside of gym there and wanted to go in for that plant, but like you said, there was no cover on the plant. There was no one watching for Jonas to try and put the diffuser down. Same thing when Pengu comes back in. Um, outside of that jacuzzi wall, there's no one there to play his trade. Kanto's alone inside a master. Very sparse positioning there for G2. Very spread out. Again, good reactionary play there from, uh, from Secret. And it doesn't help as well when you're a man down in that position to have Fabian in the basement chasing a pulse. No. Um... On Thatcher of all ops. He, he did that before, especially on the set on a Dokkabi. And he did a lot of work with it. But Thatcher? Yeah. It's not like the, the EMPs would have done a whole lot. They got the wall open. They burned out the ADS of the lifeline already before killing Goga. <laughs> um, sacrificing him to the gods. It's not that utility. It's just the firepower at that point to be able to hold the angle. If you're going to go in for a plant, you really don't want one of your members roam hunting in the basement. That's just... 
that's just, again, the poor positioning on that round from G2. But they look to bounce back as it'll be another CCTV and cash defense going out from Secret. And obviously on Clubhouse, you're expected to win a lot of your defensive rounds. But there are errors being made by G2 that could have made the rounds a little closer. These these are basic mistakes that are being done by G2, which is a bit odd to say, but... It is. So, uh, it, it does allow Team Secret to kind of at least attempt to capitalize on them, and they do, um, which is which is what makes it so so cool to watch because finally Secret are kind of having the opportunities and not giving them up. Secret as well, I imagine, are a little less emboldened with pressure from, I guess, the beginning part of the season. You saw their run last season. Oh my, Fabian taking a lot of damage, and Leon will drop off a desk and collect the kill. Aggression again coming up from Team Secret. They'll keep pressing. Full four check coming out now from Team Secret. The wall will get opened up on their backside though from Pengu and they'll have to ramp things down a bit as far as the acceleration of aggression goes. Pre-fires from Kanto, unable to collect a kill onto either of the members position in the doorway. And now Secret looking to sit pretty right now. They still have Rafters control. It'll most likely be the next objective for G2, although they look like they're positioning for a construction take. Hmm. Yeah, not having the extra player here, Fabian. It's going to hurt locking down rotations later on from the window, but Leon has great positioning here on his uh, Yokai drones. Kanto Ricchetti moving in from the opposite end. The Paulus of Fonkers was very bonkers, to say the least. Just coming around from the basement and will be back on the site close to his teammates at some point in time. You see the player in the back. That's the Buck doing some or trying to do some damage. And the Go Goga as well close up to the Buck of Kanto. He still has a lot of utility here. Should he choose to kind of lock down Stizzy in the back with no Jaeger available, those are going to ring through and do their work. Leon moving back, but Stizzy's kind of still covering from behind the bomb. C4 threw up from Fonkers and will miss again. So no damage done, and this should alert G2. The possibility of an opponent coming up the main stairs. Kanto with a smart play will drop down the stage hatch into stock. Pixel angle being held by Alems, but it's read beautifully by Pengu. The pre fire is just not connecting as Alems turns away at the dying moments. And you still got the skeleton key evaporating all of those floorboards, but pressed up against the window. Gogo will be the next to fall. Shotgun in hand as Kanto trades two back and a whiff shotgun. Stizzy will fall to Eunice on a barrel stuff. Alems at least able to trade out Pengu from the balcony down to a 2v2, but they have to retake up those cash stairs. Maybe with an impact trying to hold down and Ping's coming out from those yokai still doing work inside a cash. No time remaining, but turning away at the most inopportune time. It's a potato fest across the board, but Eunice will finally convert with the bearing nine. He pulls off the plant. And that'll be Meepy taking down his cover. Jonas pulls off again. G2 surrender yet another round on the attacking side on Clubhouse. Not to be unexpected, but in tremendously hilarious fashion. What are you doing? <laughs> it's attacking Clubhouse. Don't get me wrong, they're making mistakes. I mean, yeah, okay, attack Clubhouse. Sure. 3 1 is not. Weird. 4 2 at the half is definitely standard. Yep. This is the second most defender favorite map in the entire pool, right after Villa. Fair enough. But man. Ah, Fabian just. You know what? You, don't, you guys don't deserve me playing on. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave. Fabian's done. He's out. I would be. That's, These are um... basic, mis basic mistakes, man. Like. So, obviously, you saw their Fabians. It was a game crash. Game crashed. He didn't uh, actually leave because he didn't want to play with them anymore. No. That's what he's going to say if they win, though. Of course it is. It's Fabian. Play with me. Flips hair. Um, so, yeah, these, these first four rounds here for G2. They come away with a win attacking Church Arsenal. Mm -hmm. On the backs of, I guess, Secret on their Rome game. Just not having as much effect as they would have liked. Um, for the rest of the attacking rounds, there have been a few errors from G2. Um, it seems like they're just not playing as tight-knit as they usually do. It seems like the separation between member to member is, is growing with every round. It seems like they're getting further apart, and each person wants to make that inv individual play. And like you said, a lot of the members on G2 used to be Ash Mains. They used to be those players who used to go out and be able to make those solo plays and do want to see whatever the hell they wanted and still have some success. And it seems like G2 are, are falling into a form right now where they're 
trying to take an easy ingress and trying to take an easy route to just getting a plant down without having people in position to cover it and also not doing the work really to push out some of the anchors mm. we saw that in the gym bedroom attack specifically you've got no one covering plant Jonas is an, on an island inside of gym trying to plant there's that no one covering happen. the window which is like yeah that, that how do you plant happen. with nobody holding the window for you in gym bedrooms I mean do you have the hallway even if you have the hallway, it doesn't matter. There's two holes that are wide open for that. It's, and they're still it's played downstairs. G2 never cleared the pulse downstairs. No. Bonkers was just left to live. Fabian tried, but it was in a very late portion of the round when that plant execute was coming out. And that was kind of the problem. It seems like G2's well. timing is off right now, and their spacing is off. They seem very separated from one another and very invested in trying to make a solo play. And I really wonder why. Yeah, I, I got to wonder why, too, because we've said it a couple times now. Um, they are within striking distance. They need list stream to slow down, but they are within striking distance of actually making it to Milan. And I know Fabian said, you know, we don't care. Cool. Hey, that, it's, it's another six-figure prize pool. Come News on. News flash, a bigger paycheck is always nice, and we can confirm that. Yeah. It's not going to change that fact. No. Like, they still want to be the best. If he doesn't want the cash, we can take it. Puppy eyes. <laughs> That's I'll, I'll invest in Flinco. Flinco? Yeah. I don't have a company. What's my company? What does it sell? Question, chat. If Flynn had a company, what would it sell? It would be like a butcher shop, just to, like, eviscerate things. <laughs> or, or... A machine shop for Russian machines specifically. Oh my god. <laughs> I love this guy. Honestly, if it weren't for Rob, I would go and <laughs> go pretty crazy right now. I want to go home. <laughs> I won't be here anymore. If I, I had a shop, what would it sell? I don't know. No? No. Come on, make, make something up. Be creative. You can you can fight back. Be the global leader in GDP for guess what? <laughs> Fair enough. What else? Hmm. Terrible dad jokes that are only eclipsed by Emzo. Fair enough. Again, it's very good. There you go. What else do you have great stock in? Um. There's the the EU bias. Yep. The language, the history. True. The references. Yeah, like 80s, 90s pop culture references. That's that's like your tertiary market right there. 80s pop culture. I'm not even great at those. No, but it's way more than me and it bugs me. Because I don't know what you're saying. No, I, I think Parker is the one to really worry about when it comes to all of these things. That's fair. 90s as well. If Flynn would have a, co would have a company. Would have company. He has company, it's me. <laughs> I don't want this company. <laughs> Anyone else oh, out there wow, who would like okay. to take his spot on the desk? I'm if, open to. If Flynn, if Flynn had a company, what would it sell? You tell us, Chad. Thank you very much. By the way, the reason we're um, doing this is crap, because we're waiting. N what? We're waiting on a uh, on a player. Yeah, it's Fabian again. It's still Fabian. Game's still crashing. What a uh, what an unfortunate series of events. <sighs> Indeed, indeed, my good sir. <laughs> We're getting ideas for production as we speak, but I don't think they're too good. Nah. We'll just let it slide. Have it's Jonas okay. Brothers classes. Jonas Brothers classes. Hey, man. <laughs> they're good. They're the good. song's good. Yeah. Well, we're waiting. I mean, do we want to talk about how garbage these attacks have been? Yeah. You you will yeah, never hear me it. say that, but oh my god, those were awful. They had they had holes in them, and it seems like again there's a, there's a lack of. What do you mean holes? Those were like Swiss cheese at that point. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to be nice, all right? <laughs> For once, it's the reverse. We're playing good cop bad yeah. cop now. Yeah, we're going we're going opposite directions of what we usually do. No. Um, I don't know. As far as secrets concerned, I mean their play has been okay. Good. It's been a lot of. Mess ups from G two side. That's kind of the thing, right? It, not it, as much this as game, this game. It's isn't not secret winning. It's G two losing. It's not as it's not to try and like 
downplay the effect that Secrets Play has had on the match. No. It's just they haven't really been challenged so far. At least that's what I what I think. Yeah, no. Like I said, it's it's Secret Playing pretty standard, honestly. And I mean aggressive as well. They've taken a lot of gunfights, especially very early on for a defense on Clubhouse, where that's really not the norm. Um, but outside of that, yeah, it's it's kind of G2. Just they need to uh, the sort their stuff out. Secrets. They need to sort out Fabian first before we get in that game. Yeah, they do. Um, we'll see if he ever joins back. Maybe he really is just done. Maybe he just quit the team right now. They got to sub in Parker because <laughs> he's the sixth man on the roster. Uh, t they 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 removed him two days ago. <sighs> Unlucky. Well, now you got no one left on the roster. Maybe Sua's got to come in. Actually, Sua would probably play better than Parker. Than Parker? What about than Fabian? I mean, if you look at this game, yeah, probably. <laughs> we're kind of running out of material. At we point. are. Um, I, guess, I guess we're just trying to dig our uh, our own grave for when Fabian has to come in and do an interview if they win. If they win. If they win, he has the opportunity. Or if Honestly, they tie. The, the, th the thing is, if he wins, I'm like, you know what? You know what, man? You earned it. You earned it. You can roast me. You earned it. What did I do? I talked about you playing and, the, you know, coming back and winning. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I see it. I really have to sneeze, but we're on camera and I don't want to sneeze. <laughs> trying really hard not to sneeze, chat. It's rough. The Thank amount you. of things that we, we live through. Oh, man, the terrible life. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Guys, keep them coming. Let's see what you guys think about like us having our own stores. Mm -hmm. We sell. Oh, hey, he's here. And the game we is... We did it. So, let's go. We're going to check stuff and then head into the game. Yeah, we got to see if we didn't um, break things more <laughs> with the rehost. Uh, but we are in round five, which is which is correct. It's a 3-1 uh, lead right now for Secret. The bands are correct, which is good. You always like to have that, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to be loading in. Have you... Look, I, I think I need a spot on an analyst desk. Would you like to join? Why? Because you're kind of, like, explaining things very well, very eloquently. It's almost like it's my job. <laughs> Crazy thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back downstairs, Secret will go to the church. In Arsenal Room, the only site they've been unsuccessful on, which was weird considering that this is probably your most defensible site. I think it's the big... What, one thing, Otero okay. said, said this, and Parker's a really funny guy. He said, Milos hasn't met a word he didn't want to overpronounce. And I'm like, Parker, do you know, Mr. White Boy, do you know what, do you know what spices are, or is it just bread? Okay, there you go. I need to find Wow, it. wow. Let's go. Chirps are flying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open the WhatsApp group in a second, and it's just <laughs> nonstop. I'm going to be the only one casting. You're going to be too busy chirping, Parker. I don't know, man. I have to. Well, actually, now that you say this, I'm not, not even going to be here until the end of the season. Because you remember, guys, when I told you that my visa problems are going to be fixed? <laughs> <laughs> I love Stuart. Stuart from Ubisoft said, if Flynn had a company, it would sell hoodies. Okay, and you're not wrong. Yeah. We're not wrong about. I'm not gonna be here anymore. It's gonna be, it's gonna be awful for the next few weeks. But Goga coming around here, the entrance. Falker's taken a bit of damage early on, so just from the kitchen. And drones are already giving Goga info on position. Is we actually head into the game and really focus on what's going on here. G2 have a lot of work to do, but still a 3-1 is not an impossible position to be in. Taken away. Well done, Cantor Ricchetti. And still continuing on as we usually see on, on Clubhouse. Well, you can use two hard breachers. You're going to use two hard breachers. But the Echo might pose a bit more of a problem. So, Elems is going to be playing the op now, as before Leon was kind of sniping heads here and there. So, dangerous play there from Meepy. And uh, I believe that was Fonkers. Leon or Fonkers that joined Meepy as they tried to duo push the bottom of the main stairs to attack Goga off of this call from Fonkers. I imagine it was Leon and Meepy, but 
Thermite Charge from Pengu will finally open up Moto Hatch, so they have one point of entry now. Still have Jonas on the Hibana as well if they wanted to use that. And I imagine Church Wall again will be a primary target for Pengu and Nitro Cell being prepped and ripped by Fonkers. And there goes Jonas, there goes your Hibana. So now you can't open Blue Hatch. That's a tough scenario to be in. I don't even think Kitchen Hatch is open either. At least Kanto will trade it onto Fonkers, but he's already done the damage necessary. The Thermite Charge coming out, and I'm, that's on Church Wall. So with a minute remaining, if you're G2 right now, you've got plenty of time to burn utility and push in through Church. That's a lot of space, and Stizzy again will miss the C4, as he did a couple rounds ago. Pengu on the floor, and definitely not expected here for the mutes. Dizzy, oh, he's speaking the opposite angle, and he's not sure. Pengu taking no damage will take away Stizzy. Goga is at half HP and is watching the back, and he'll find the kill on LMs. 4v2, and Meepy has the impact grenades to open up more holes to fight against this. They're not plant planting behind the black box. Pengu is still safe, will take off Leon, and Meepy's last alive looking up. It's a bit too far back. We'll find one kill on Gogo. It's already fairly low in HP. Another on a Kando Ricchetti. He's down at 35 health. So maneuvering around the hallway in a 1v2. And the amount of damage that the TCSG 12 does could definitely win things out for you, especially with those two impact grenades, should he choose to use them. Fire in from Fabian. So now all the pings are just being given to Meepy. Unsure of the last position of the Thermite goes in, but Pengu still around the corner. Moto will drop Meepy in G2. Take another round of the board. Pengu the Fragmite today. He's able to collect a myriad of bodies on the side of Team Secret on that push, and that really comes down to just a lack of suppression of being able to open up that church wall. As soon as that was open, you had that much time remaining on the side of G2. It was a walk in the park to get a plant down. They did it as swiftly as they did, thanks to the loss of the Echo. The Lem's falling pretty early on in the latter portion of that round. The Yokai's were still up and providing pings onto the member inside of blue, which was Fabian. And now Fabian, sick of getting pinged out by some Yokai drones, will uh, six pick over into an IQ. And Fonker's going to come off the pulse, take up the Jaeger, as now Leon is taking a bandit. So Secret, in their, I guess, struggles with this church wall, are going to take all three reinforcement denial operators, Bandit, Kai, and Mute. They're really sick of walls getting open. Yeah, that's kind of just, hey, let's have all three of them at the same time, just to be sure. It's a bit of overcommitment, but it makes sense given the fact that Pengu has been such a nuisance. And if only G2 knew, then the Thatcher would have been a great operator. The instant they switch away the Thatcher is the time where they'll probably need him most. That's, that's funny. Yeah, they swapped to the IQ because of those Echo Drones, and then Team Secret fully commit to the uh, the wall disruption utility. So, in this scenario, it looks like just based on utility, the G2 are going to have a tough time opening things up as easily as they have been. Um, the good news for Jonas in this round is that Fonkers is no longer playing the Pulse. We'll have to worry about Nitro Cells from possibly Leon and Stizzy. Jonas really needs to, uh, to keep himself safe in these rounds. He's been dying extremely early as that Habana, and like you said, he's not have a fun. He's not had a fun six months. It's gonna take. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna take some determination from Jonas and honestly the rest of G2 to keep him safe in this nice little box, so they aren't surrendering Diffuser in some very unfortunate position. Now Fabian sniping off all the utility. So far, has not found a ton. He does find one player on his phone. But that's about it. Throwing it downstairs to continue, and that's the Yokai spot. And unfortunately for Fabian, you can't really do anything against that. Having the Thatcher would have been great, but it is a response to the Yokai drones that have been so difficult to deal with before. No, it's such a difficult angle to find. Utility is set on the floor, but you can't really do much against that. You see, everything has been reinforced. And I want to highlight this for just a second. The reinforcements on the armory wall are red side out in the hallway, which means you can't grenade over them. I don't know if they'll ever fix this, but you actually can't. It doesn't work. It always is difficult to bounce the grenades above them, above that that you know top of the th four meter wall. But 
Oh man, the um, the red side in the hallway means that it's nigh impossible to actually do anything against it. The the grenade from the buck kind of keeps bouncing around and doesn't hit the opposite end to try and hit the bandit. Behind. So we still stand at a 5v5. And like we said, the utility from Team Secret being instrumental in stalling out the opening of positional points for Team Secret on their defense. G2 having a, a tough time trying to find a point of entry. And it looks like it'll be Pengu inside of Dirt now, but Stizzy will take down Goga and Kanto. Leon tacking on. They all start falling. Suddenly a 5v5 turns into a 1v5 for Pengu to work his way out of. Trapped inside of a Dirt tunnel with nowhere to go. Pressure all amounting on front of him, and some shots rattle out, and Nitro Cell will ring out, and Stizzy collects the three bang for the round. Pengu will fall, it's a 4-2 split at the half. Nothing out of the ordinary as far as the scoreline is concerned. But again, the attacks from G2 on that one, very unfortunate they didn't have a Thatcher. So Pengu has had a decent impact on the game so far. I mean, we showed the scoreboard, but it wouldn't really say much, because we have to rehost. But Pengu, in terms of kills and also the effect on a hard breacher, has pretty darn, has been pretty darn impressive. Uh, but obviously, you put him in a position like that, there's not much that he's going to be able to do, right? <clears throat> now the problem is, what do you do on the opposite end? Um, you know, you're now in a defense. Jonas has done considerably well on Maestro. If you look at last week. And Kanto Ricchetti moves away from the Alibi to run the Rook. So just having those three ACOGs is going to be a big deal for you, but you don't have a Bandit, you don't have Mute, you don't have Electro Claws. They're not here. They're not available for you. It's going to be running more of a standard way of doing things, and we saw how that worked or didn't for Secret when they tried to do it, even us having one anti heart breach, if you will. But now you have two Heartbreachers on the side of Team Secret. And they're going to be able to really open up those walls and go for church takes if really necessary. It's a lot of flexibility on that. We have Team Secret to identify this, this hole in the G2 strategy for right now. I'm reloading. As far as the strategy for G2 on this defense, I imagine we're going to be seeing them bunker up a little bit, not really trying to flex out like we saw Team Secret try on that first attempt they defended downstairs. For this defense, they've also left Blue Hatch soft. That's questionable. I mean, you still have the utility to pop it open, whether it's hard or soft, but it seems like they've invested a reinforcement elsewhere, or they have a better positional priority for a reinforcement. I'm not sure what the, uh, the order of progression there for reinforcements would be for G2. Typically, you would have that open, but... Nonetheless, Leon going to pop up in the bottom of the main stairs, and he's waiting for anyone to reciprocate what he was bringing. Last time they defended the basement, which was a lot of aggression towards the bottom of the main stairs, waiting for, unfortunately, Goga to push down those main stairs, and met with two members of Team Secret. Seems like Team Secret are playing this pretty standard, and they're not worried about it, Rome. You can see that in the way they're playing and opening up, and, and honestly, what their priority is on their drones. They know that all five members of G2 are downstairs, and Echo Drone, bouncing and dodging away from a Lems, will escape to safety as Fabian makes his way back up the blue stairs as a breach charge. Again, will detonate onto the hatch. Things come out onto Fabian inside of blue stairs, and I don't think he's going to fight this. No, Still it holding, would make no sense. Still holding on the stairwell. What? This is a, a prolonged engagement, honestly. It's a cold war right now. No one actually taking shots, but Fabian holding his ground for a very long time. I, I, I don't like this position at all. Fabian should just fall back and play down. Pengu will find a kill on Leon. That's the buck eliminated, and you don't have to worry about grenades anymore. Flashbangs are in to stop any potential impact tricks. Fabian just... Oh, no. There you go. That's the easiest kill of Fonker's life. Another impact trick successful on the Xkairos, but I wonder if there's going to be another one. You heard it. I'm not sure if it did open up hatch or not. No, that was the thermite charge opening things up in here. The entrance into church. Stizzy. Fire in the back, but find no kill. A Lems, EMP, but Jonas will do the work. The Maestro, the Alda, so many rounds in the mag. Stizzy will finally take him away, though. A 3v3 with Kanto Rocchetti trying to do some work, and even Goga. Supplying some firepower in the back with the, the Echo. Kanto with one. And still, the IQ has to rotate back. 35 seconds on the clock. Meepy finds the head of Goga to take him off. Not sure why 
Gogo is even trying to look through here. Fonkers drops down the hatch and finds the kill on Kanto. And suddenly the roles are reversed. Meepia will get taken away by Pengu. Does he have anything here to deal with Fonkers? Any utility? The hole is so small to go through. He'll have to just maneuver through it. Oh no, it's not enough to rotate by. Fonkers takes away utility at the top. This is Yokai Drone being watched. He'll walk in and Pengu will fire, but he's just going to play for time. He knows the Diffuser is on his side. There's so little left. Pengu still turns around and finds the kill that, with the lesion of this SMG. And this is the second time in a few weeks that we see Pengu in the same position doing this sort of work. Pengu again. Uh, I don't know what preempted these role changes for G2. We saw it last week suddenly coming out of nowhere where G2 are swapping up their roles for basically every single member on the team. Um, Pengu on the attacking side is now put into a hard breach position. Goga is on entry and flex. It's a lot of swap ups there. You've got Fabian now on flank hold instead of breach. It's a lot of swapping going on within the G2 roster, I guess, to try and find some semblance of cohesion and continued success in the online season here. Obviously, they're run at SI and you did no tweaking. They're going to go to a CCTV and cash room defense right now, and Pengu obviously leading the charge right now in terms of kills. He had the, I think it was, yeah, it was three on the round that just transpired and three on the round previous. That's all the... Uh, and there was one round before that since the rehost, and that's all the information we have right now. I'm sure there were other people tracking the beginning portion before the rehost, and those stats will come out after the game, but for right now, Pengu has been an instrumental part in the reason why G2 is still in this game. Been a lot of uh, tricky scenarios that he's had to work his way out of, and it's unsurprising. It's very characteristic to see Pengu winning out those clutch situations and being that all-star performer for G2. It's just interesting to see it being done in the roles that you would never really expect. I don't know if it's the, the role thing that's really affecting G2 in this game. I, I think it's more of a mindset thing as well. I mean, you wouldn't be expecting them to come down to even losing the gunfights, at least most of them. It's, if you look at it, really only Pengu that's been consistently hitting the shots that are required. A bit problematic here, but still. 3-4. Round on defense picked up. It's not really out of the ordinary, as we mentioned before. Kanto Ricchetti held up on the rafters or on the catwalk. The grenade thrown up from Leon will not connect a bit too far to the front, but it'll be more than enough to clear off the bandit batteries. A second grenade will delay things. That's why he was throwing the grenades. Not for a kill, but for the utility. And it's a worthy sacrifice, as now with the wall open, Secret are going to have at least an extra angle, at most, a way to walk in a second. we got to clear out rafters here if you're Team Secret on the attacking side, and that's exactly what Mipi will begin to facilitate. And you've got the Clash of Fabian, though. That's really going to be a thorn in Team Secret on their clear. They don't really have a lot of utility to deal with the Clash. You've got Leon with no more frag grenades. Never mind. Okay, you literally have no utility other than possibly a crossfire through the balcony door and the... Rafter's window, but there's not really a lot to be done. Kanto getting what are you very aggressive here. Now he's pinged out and stuck in the corner. Shots will ring out from Fonkers on the lounge wall, but they won't connect. Leon turns the corner with pace, but also they allow Kanto to escape back down through the lounge door. He's made it back up cash stairs. The aggressive play from Kanto to Ketty, not punished by Team Secret. And now they've got Fabian to deal with, who has taken a, a handful of damage here up on the top of the Rafters, but this will slow down Secret immensely in the Flashbangs come raining in just to try and disorient Fabian and catch him on the backside, but you've got a lot of shots coming in through this soft wall up against the rafters from the rest of G2. Finally, a knife to the shield will bash it to the side momentarily. Fabian will be felled, but Leon and Stizzy both on one shot with the HP. Yeah, that's really what you want to do to deal with the clash, right? Get up close and personal. It's a bit counterintuitive, but that's how it works. You say, Leon and Stizzy, low on HP, they have to walk in and even the MP5 can do a lot of work against this. Secret have to be very well timed on their assault. Funkers will find Kanto, but Pengu with a refrag and Gogo with another Funkers eliminated. The fuse are not set yet as Meepy is going to get taken off by Pengu. Alems having Gogo walk right into his sights. The Maestro spot in the back. Alems finds Jonas. Puts another round on the board. Team Secret at five. All of 
all, all because of mispositioning and over-aggressive peaks. Yeah. The rest of that round for G2. So I, I understand what you're saying with like the over-aggressive peaks there on that portion, especially to the latter half. Yeah. Um, they weren't getting punished for their initial play, as you saw Kanto running all the way back up the cash stairs and never being punished for it after being droned out. That's that's a huge misplay there from Secret, and we should point that out. Uh, if we're going to criticize one team, might as well criticize the other for their mistakes. G2 on that round at the end there, you have Goga and Jonas as the Echo and the Maestro left in a 2v2 with very limited time remaining. You can play that for Plant. You have the ultimate Plant Denial in the Evil Eyes because they haven't been taken care of yet. There was no Zofia. It's a very, very weird situation to have Goga then try and peek out and take the aggressive fight onto the man on balcony rather than play time, which was the greatest enemy of Secret in that round, and force Elems to push in through the balcony breach. I was very curious why Goga elected to peek in that exact position, considering he had, like, G2 had everything going for them in the latter portion of that round. One thing I want to say and kind of bring out here, just like last week, should G2 tie or lose the secret, mm -hmm. Empire go to land regardless. Right, they lost to Penta. Yep. So they don't. They haven't clinched yet. Yes, they but need G2 to, to tie or lose. Yes. So this means that the stream still have a huge advantage. They they would make it to land, but they're not confirmed yet. But Empire, there would be no way to kind of take them off of one of the two positions. It's the the number one seed is still up in the air. Should that victory or G2's loss come forth or tie? But at least they would be qualified and that's pretty good. That's it, Leon holding along and here with the Capital. And okay, they're gonna try to use this to push the bandit away and they're gonna be very successful with this. Very well done here to pull Pengu back. Now, G2, one of the teams to run actively both a Mute and a Bandit on this site. And they're not. I think there's uh, like some sort of highlight reason to not bring the Mute, or... Or is it just, oh, we want to play Clash? I feel like G2 are really trying to stall out Secret. I feel it. they're trying to employ a strategy. If you play this much Plant Denial on this site with a Clash, there's got to be a reasoning behind your mentality on it. And the only thing I can really pick out here from these last two rounds is that secret there must be something in the VODs or something in the history playing against G2 that G2 are feeling that secret should be stalling they shouldn't be as efficient as they have been I really like that play from Leon though using that new scope to line up on the M249 where the crossbow bolt should be for the succeeding bolt and then pull off don't use your mouse literally just scroll wheel or press 4 again Fonkers will take down Jonas, and there goes your Maestro extremely early. We've talked about Jonas dying early a lot. Down below, though, Kanto laying in wait. will take down one flashbang right now. Now he's stuck in the corner. Fabian, though, the saving grace from above. will take down Stizzy. The Thermite is gone. Meepy taking a lot of damage up top again. Fabian's got the SMG9 in hand, but shots rain out from Alems again on his favorite position outside that balcony. The Diffuser is recovered. Oh, aggressive peek from Pengu will meet with punishment. Falling now, and now surrendering the man advantage. The health advantage still healthily on the side of G2 there for a moment, but now Goga stuck between a rock and a hard place. Eliminated by both the crossfire of Flankers and Alems, and now a retake scenario for Kanto as he rushes up into the rafters. Top of cash stairs. Now trying to go through the rotate. No one's covering the plant, though, inside of A. Turning the corner, Kanto, as the plant goes down, Fonkers will fall. It's slow 1v2 to work out of an opposed plant scenario. Not spotting the head on the rafters window. Team Secret will secure themselves a point, and that is Empire, confirmed, going to Milan. Congratulations to Empire. They go the distance, and they qualify for their first ever Pro League Land Finals. No Russian team has ever qualified for a Pro League Final. We had a Spanish team, we had a German team. We've never had a Russian team. So now if you're G2, you're watching the last game of the evening, uh, the mouse game versus the stream, you're watching that incredibly intently. Yeah, because you lose here. I don't know if G2 would realistically be able to come back at this point. I mean... Hey, we said that for the NIP game. I mean, we, we weren't casting it but the NIP game two weeks ago on Clubhouse. No, I mean, I mean come back in terms of the overall... Oh, the points standings. in the standings? It's going to be a rough one. 
it does look like we have now solidified two two I mean, players in this, EU to make it. This this might at least like calm down people that keep posting. Oh, this is so boring. G2 keep winning everything. Meow meow meow. Like, meow meow meow. Yes. You think they're all cats on the internet? Yes. You are from 2010. <laughs> Tell me you don't look at cat the uh, cat gifts every now and then. It makes you feel good. Or dog gifts as well. They're both fine. I won't judge. I mean, ferrets as well. <laughs> what? Yeah. The downstairs defense coming out now from G2 is they have their backs against the wall. They've surrendered the possibility of garnering three points out of this in the standings. And like we said, now with the guaranteed point coming out from Secret. Now if you're Team Secret, you talk about surviving relegation at this point because you're in the auto relegation spot. Not just in the position where you have to play for your life in one best of three. You got, you're just gone. You are just simply deleted from Pro League for a six month season. And this is also a team that had to scrap their way back together after the split from what was playing Ducks and then the whole situation there that's now chaos. Um, they had to grind their way back up through Challenger League and make it into Pro League. And now we're talking about them being relegated just two seasons later. Team Secret in a bind right now. Good thing is, they're only, what, one point back of Na'Vi? Six and seven, respectively, if I'm not mistaken. Fabian's taking a lot of damage upstairs, though, inside of Masters. He's down to about two HP, as Leon is trying to clear him out from outside the Jacuzzi wall. Secret uh, not saving any strats in this matchup, that's for sure. Now Leon will move in by the bedroom, just try to clear things out. This is very similar in some way to how they clear out um, the, the main floor on Oregon, where it's just push from small tower with between the Habana and the Buck, go in, clear out kitchen and anybody in there. And Yuna's gonna be the first one taken away. Stizzy just watches him down at the bottom of the stairs. Kanto with pre-fire on a Leon. Will land the shot and take away the Buck before he's able to use any grenades in the back. Pre-fire from Meepy inside of Cash will not be met with anything. Important note, mm. this is a basement defense. Uh huh. You've got your Maestro, your Valkyrie, and your Alibi all upstairs trying to defend Cash. And granted, he was I mean, successful in taking away the buck and killed a decent amount of time. They're cutting off all the rotations. That's a big deal. Fabian, though, will find one on Fonkers. I mean, you're trying to pressure your opponents out of this position to kill them as they rotate back down. And Meepy's going to be able to find Kanto pre-fire down as Pingu finds one more on Meepy. And they actually down one player, just to be sure. Here, is there anybody in the back? Nope. Fabian off in a 2v2. No, last two players are in sight. And this is actually a pretty good defensive position. What is going Are we watching Latin America? Well, Pengu's still up in the rafters. He's going to vault off and get droned out now. Pinged inside of lounge. He's going to drop oil pit to the narrow safety. Milliseconds away was a lems to collect the kill. And now he'll try to cut off the rotate, holding from the blue stairs. And looks like Pengu is well aware of this. Thermite charge coming out now from Stizzy. So it looked like he was going to try and blow open either Moto Hatch or Blue Hatch. A set of EMPs to try and clear out any goo mines. And he'll spot the Yokai drone that would have given calls to Pengu as well. And he's backed off inside of the oil pit tunnel. The Blue Hatch evaporated right above him. The drop from Stizzy, but laying in wait is Pengu. He'll grab one. The immediate trade from Alems. The pings come out, and Gogo -Go will win it out in narrow fashion. Secret unable to collect the win just yet and propel themselves out of auto relegation. Comes down to one gunfight. And the Spaniard. CCI Clutch Master able to secure the round for G2. They live to fight another day in this matchup and possibly fight it back for one point. Finally, they woke up. We've seen that top four Rome function. Yeah. Very effectively, actually. But you have to be very careful. There's a lot of reinforcements that are dedicated to make sure Cash is an impregnable fortress. And had Pengu not been able to rotate down from the catwalk, that would have spelled disaster the entire game. Yeah, that would have been over if Pengu was cut off inside of Garage or dropping Oil Pit and wasn't able to make it back uh, down the blue tunnel. Honestly, his positioning there saved him as well, playing prone instead of standing. So Pengu now with 10 kills since the rehost. A little more even on the side of Secret as far as kills are concerned, but we head to a gym bedroom defense. Teams are one for one, one for one today. It was just the Secret defense that's been successful here. 
That's the only attempt there's been. It'll be G2 trying to replicate now, and we got Pengu reinforcing all the way over to the external CCTV win or wall. It's a bit of a stretch as far as the reinforcements are concerned, but I guess it's to protect you from any of the backside pressure from spawn over by warehouse when you try to peek window. More typically, you see the cash walls being reinforced, though, to try and turn cash again into that giant pivot pot or pivot point. I mean, the, the big thing as well is that G2 are kind of forced to run the Echo of the Supernova because if, if you've noticed, or if you haven't, both Smoke and Mute have been basically not present at all in this, in this matchup for them, at least very rarely. So they have to bring some sort of shotguns to remodel the site. And for that, they, they have to sacrifice the, M, uh, you know, the MP5 SD. And it's not a great thing when you, you're only really stuck with only one ACOG, even though you have the Echo. Hmm. Pengu on the bandit's usual position that actually Jonas is very well known for, but he's going to be running the Maestro as he has been doing for the past couple weeks. Again, more pings downstairs as Kanto is spotted but unable to collect the kill once again. Looks like a rerun from the last round as the one man who cut it off, Elem, is still outside on drone. Kanto's going to escape to the blue stairs as he hears Fonkers pushing his way into the garage door. Unable to capitalize, and again, an aggressive play from Kanta Ricchetti on the Jaeger, and seems like missed opportunities here for Secret to try and close this out, but we still stand at a 5v5, no damage done to any of the members on Team Secret, now they've cleared out a majority of cash, missing the Yokai as well, anticipating a peak coming from the doorway, but G2 have fallen all the way back to Master. So holding back, Kanto. So roaming downstairs in the bar, at least for Secret, they've been able to take control of cash and server. This, now the big question is, oh no, Stizzy takes off Jonas. Ouch, that has got to hurt. Now in this position, you'd love to have a grenade to kind of lob in the back against the bandit. Stizzy takes a bit of damage in the engagement. That hallway of death. All right, the Fuser's in the hands of Alem's. Oh, Leon! One shot, pre-fires the second. Close up to the bomb, but it's Pengu trying to find the kill. C4 thrown up. Oh, at least give some sort of angles. Goga, find one of the bearing nine. A second one of the bearing nine, unable to flick onto the third. Funker still in. Drops Goga. Fabian, the 1v2 solo on HP, being fired upon by the open... No, no, closed wall, just the hallway. Goes into the gym as he's getting all of the pings that he'd require. The other angle is being held as we speak by the IQ. Fabian with one, Fabian with two, the clutch. G2 remain in the game. But for how long? That's the real question. The one angle that you could have been pushed by. Because you're watching the other one. Yeah. That's tough for Fonkers. Just watching the wrong angle. I mean, it's a 50-50, or really... 33, 33, 33, because they did have a bathroom rotate as well. So I imagine that's what the anticipation was, is that Fabian was going to push up the main stairs because they knew that they should have, anyway, known that Fabian was downstairs because of the failed Nitro Cell. So the anticipation for Secret, I imagine, without any information and maybe lack of a flank drone is the culprit here. Um, they anticipate Fabian pushing up main stairs, going gym hallway, basically following Stizzy in a path but vaulting into bathroom and taking the angle from there. Instead, Fabian goes for the flank through Jim, and clearly just the wrong read and the wrong guess there from Secret and Fonkers is the cover. Stop giving G2 an inch to come back, maybe? Yeah. Because these three points are massive. Smile. We're talking about, you know, your lives in, in Pro League for next season uh, being on the line here. That's That's tough. That's that's really tough here for Secret because you've been within arm's reach again for back-to-back -back rounds. And again, G2, whether it's Kanto or not, but there have been members of G2 that have been stretched far away from any possible support. They're basically alone in a portion of the map. They get droned out in a position with basically one rotate out, and they allow Kanto freedom. It's just an inability right now for Secret to clamp down on these roamers from G2, cordon them off, and make sure they have zero escape. And that's the coordination from Secret kind of breaking down right now. 
Fokker's coming in here, setting up the Claymore to make sure nobody vaults out of the blue stairs and to attack from the back. Scanning for electronics. Sweeping for electronics. Fokker's moving in, he'll spot utility on the floor, but that's about it. Take a lot of damage actually through the wall. Something you're not expecting a player in the bar. Pre fire just through anywhere. And there you go. Fabian finally able to find him by the close and opened up holes. Yokai drones being ferried back to help him out. And Yunus actually crossfire angle. But Kanto will get taken off by a Lems. Again, the lounge just being locked down by Team Secret. Now they're able to peek inside of the bar, but Lems knows that there's one player inside of the lounge. And you hear the Elda rattling on the side. And that's Yuna sticking away by Meepy. The rattling gun is not enough. Leon with another one on a Fabian. A 4v2 as Team Secret are looking to close this whole match. Put the lid on G2. Their chances thing out as we get closer and closer to the Pro League Finals. EMP comes out to dismantle what was left on the wall, and Pengu won't have enough time to try and stop this with a bandit trick, so... They'll stay hard set in his position on top of the rafters, though, as the wall gets dismantled by the exothermic charge. And I would say, you know, maybe if Secret had a few uh, lower HP members that this is doable, but this is going to be a tough road here. Small repel outside, but Pengu nails the shot. Stacey will fall. There's a flank from the back now through the construction door. Good barricade there from G2 to provide sound cover for whenever Leon tries to skeleton key and explode through this door frame. Instead, he'll head to the construction window right on top of Pengu, but he can't land the shot. Pengu springs up and escapes to safety back into side of Cash Doorway. Lem's holding the garage as that's now the position that is weakest on the side of the G2 defense as Pengu has been bouncing around from position to position, unable. And now that sounds like a nitro cell that was unable to connect, and ooh, Leon missing a lot of shots again onto an exposed Goga. Missed opportunities from Secret back to back to back. Leon looking to vault into the window, finally dismantling Pengu and a double kill for Leon. Team Secret by the skin of their teeth in the final possible round. We go the distance in back-to-back -back games. But it's Team Secret coming away with the victory. Three points. And that'll push them to the number seven spot. We await the Navi game, which will be next. Mm -hmm. Leon Gids, are you kidding me? And this game, Stizzy also is able to put up quite a bit. And this is only at the second half of this matchup. G2 just carried by Pengu throughout this whole game. Pre-re 